Here's an example of a polygon. We would call this segment right here BC, we would call this side BC. And remember that each of these points right here, that would be the vertex. We would call that a vertex. Okay. And then to name it, we would just pick a letter to start with. So let's say I start with A and then I would work my way around. So I would call this polygon a, B, C, D, E. And then remember that we use capital letters to name them, to name the points and the polygons. All right. Next, we're going to talk about concave versus convex. Now, convex means that there is no line. If I take these lines out here, these, these sides, and I draw them out longer, um, convex means that none of those lines are going to cross inside the polygon. So like this. If I take this line here and I extend them all out, okay. none of these lines, these red lines went inside, went cut through the shape, the polygon. They, these two up here would cross up here, but they're not, they, their intersection is not inside the polygon. Now, the other word, concave, that means if I take um, these sides here, and they cross on the inside, which I would get it right here. Okay, see how this line here cut through the polygon? That means it's concave. I can do the same thing with this line. If I go through here, it cuts inside or cuts across the polygon. So this would be an example of convex. This would be an example of concave. Right, this next example, our first example says to uh, classify each polygon by the number of sides. And then we want to tell whether it's concave or convex. Um, so on this one, I, you just count the number of sides. So I've got four sides here, so that means it's going to be a quadrilateral. Okay. And then remember, if I can extend any of these sides and they cross or they cut through the polygon, that means it's concave. So I can take this one and if I extend it, it's going to cut across and actually go through the inside of the polygon. So that means this first one is a concave quadrilateral. Okay. And then this example B, well first it has six sides, so that means it's a hexagon. Okay. And then if I were to extend all of these out, I'm not going to get any that would actually cut across the inside, the interior of the polygon. So that means it's going to be convex. And so on a lot of these geometry problems, you hear convex polygon, or a convex hexagon, convex pentagon. And that's just going to mean these kind of basic general shapes that we're familiar with. All right, here I have the, just to review some of the formulas that you should be familiar with about the perimeter and area of some basic shapes like the triangle, the square, and the rectangle, because we are fixing to use them um, in the coordinate plane. So example two now says that we want to find the perimeter of this triangle ABC with the vertices ABC here. So the first thing we have to do is let's graph this. All right, so now here's my points. Now to find the perimeter, remember I need to know the, 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 the distance between each of the points or the length of these three sides here. Now these, these two, the AC and segment BC, those are easy because they're vertical and horizontal lines. So all you have to do on this particular one is just count them. So I would have a distance of 
five on this one, so this would be five units long. Going this way, if I'm at three down to negative three, that gives me a length of six. Okay. Now this one right here, this segment AB, that's it's slanted. It's a diagonal type um, line segment. So for that one, I'm, I am going to have to use a distance formula. So for AB, I need to take the square root of, uh, this will be x1, y1, x2, y2. So that tells me I want to do 3 minus negative 2 squared plus um, negative 3 minus 3 squared. Okay. Um, let's see. That becomes 3 plus 2, which is 5, so that's 25. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. If I square that, that gives me 36. So I have the square root of 25 plus the square root of, or 25 plus 36. Right, so square root of 61, and then um, that's going to be about 7.8. Okay, so this is approximately 7.8 units. So the perimeter of ABC is going to be 6 plus 5 plus 7.8, uh, which comes out to be approximately 18.8 units. All right, we have example number three. It says find the area of triangle DEF, and then they give us these points. So kind of like before, let's graph it, see what it looks like to get an idea of what we have to do. So here's our graph. Um, so remember that the area of a triangle is going to be one half base times height. Okay. Now uh, remember that the base and the height are always perpendicular to each other. So, and I'm going to go ahead and give you the symbol. It, the symbol for perpendicular is that it makes an upside down T. That means that they intersect at a right angle. So um, the way I do problems like this when I'm looking at the coordinate plane is I take, if I can get either a horizontal line or a vertical line, that's the line that I want to use. So this right here, this line of segment EF or FE, um, is horizontal. So I can use this as my base. So my V is going to equal this distance from negative 4 to positive 4 on the x-axis. So if I count that out, that's going to give me my base of 8. Now to get my height, uh, what I need to do is I need to remember, come down at a 90 degree angle from this top vertex. So I would come straight down this way to get the height. Right. And so since it's vertical, yes, yeah, since it's vertical, I can just count this length here. And so that tells me that my height is going to be it's three and three that makes six. So my height is six. So the area of the triangle is going to be one half of eight times six, uh, which comes out to be twenty-four units squared.